What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to use the use reducer hook. This is a hook that's great to use if you're dealing with more complex state. For more simple and basic state, use state is always a great choice, but if your state starts to get more complicated, use reducer is a great fit. If you're familiar with Redux, it's basically the same thing, but you don't have to bring in that entire library. Both can be very useful, and I'll go over why and when I would use one over the other at the end of this video. The more complex state that we'll be dealing with is three different states rolled into one. We'll manage a loading state, an error state, and whether there's data or not. I'm going to reach out to an API, and I'll set loading to true and error to false. If it's successful, I'll change loading to false and set the data. If I get an error, I'll set loading to false and then set the error. The states themselves aren't too complicated, but we want full control over how all three of them work together. And that's exactly what use reducer is great for. To start off, we'll need some initial state and a reducer to manage that state. So that initial state, I'll call an initial state, which will be an object. And I'll say loading is false, error is null, and quote. So we're reaching out to an API where we're retrieving a quote. And we'll start that off with an empty string. And for our reducer, we'll call that reducer. And we're going to get two things passed into that reducer, our state and an action, which is used to manage that state. And you'll usually see a switch statement inside a reducer. This is because when you're reaching for reducer, you're typically dealing with more complex state. So in the switch statement, we'll check for action.type. You can send in different types of actions and then change the state accordingly. And then we'll have three different cases that we'll check for. The one will be fetch quote start. And for each case, we'll return a new updated state. So we'll return another object. We'll pass in that old state, and then we'll set the loading to true. Let me uh, toss in the default here so it stops barking at me. Default, we'll just return state. We shouldn't get to this point because we'll, we'll use a case statement for each one of the action types that we're going to send in, but we'll just return the state if it ever did reach that default. Another case we'll check for is fetch quote fail. Let's see if we get an error. And for that, we'll return an updated state. We pass in our old state. We'll say loading is false. We'll say error. We'll just set to a string. I swear this usually never happens. And we'll change the quote, if there is one at the time, to an empty string. And actually, I'm going to change the quote to an empty string here if there is one when we fetch for a new quote. And then our last case statement, we'll check for fetch quote, success. And we will return our old state and the updated new state where we'll say loading is false, error is null, and the quote is an action dot quote. So this is a payload We'll be sending in an action, which will have a type property, 
and we'll check for the types, but we can also add more to it, some more data, which is a payload, and we can call it whatever we want. We'll call it quote, and then when we set the quote, we'll say action.quote. I'll show you that in a minute. And now we can use use reducer. I don't think that's going to auto import. So I'll import it here inside curly braces because it's a named import. And then we pass in two things into our reducer. That is our reducer, which we named reducer here and our initial state, which we called initial state. And that's going to give us two things back inside an array. So we're using array destructuring on the left side of the, we're on the left side of the equal sign here. And those two things are going to be the state and dispatch, which is a function where we send in our action to update the state so that the action can affect the state. And we'll call out to our API. We'll say fetch quote. And before we even reach out to the API, we'll dispatch our first action so that we turn the state to loading. So I'll do dispatch and then you send in an object for the action it's going to be checked here we're passing in the action action.type any payload that we send in so for this first one we're going to say the type is fetch quote start So that'll change loading to true. Then we can reach out to our API. We'll do fetch. I have an API here that I'm using. That just fetches a random quote. We'll say dot then response response dot JSON. We'll do it again. And this is where we get back our data. And so here we'll dispatch a different action. The type would be fetch quote success. And then we'll actually send in a payload here where we set that quote. And we can name that whatever we want here, but we'll have to access it there. So I'm saying quote, and then the data that we're getting back here is data, and then the quote is under the property of content. So we're setting the quote from the API to this property, quote, in the action here. So we're dispatching the action. The type is fetch quote success, and quote is the payload. We'll do a dot catch where we would get the error. And for that, we'll just dispatch the type fetch quote fail. And we don't need to send in a payload. You might want to usually send in the error, but we're just setting it to a string. So we don't have to pass in the error or any additional payload. So these are the dispatch functions that we're getting back from use reducer. And now we can use the state to display the state, depending on what the state is after we dispatch the action, which manages the state. So let's do a section here. So I'll check for these different states in a ternary expression. So I'll say, State dot loading, and if that's true, I'll say loading, 
and if it's false, we'll display nothing. And I'll check for state dot error. And if that's true, I will also display state dot error because we're setting that to a string here if there is an error. So I'll display that and null if there's no error. And lastly, I'll check for state dot quote. And if that's true, I'm also doing a paragraph tag. I'll throw some quotes in there because that will be a quote. And then I'll do state dot quote. And if there is no quote, we'll say null. And then lastly, I'll toss a button up here to fetch it. We'll say on click and pass in our fetch quote function here. And I'll say fetch quote. Save all that. Just fetch quote here. See it said loading. Friendship multiplies the good of life and divides the evil. It's deep. So we can keep doing that. Loading is pretty quick there. Can do a set timeout. I'll set that as a, for a second. There you go. And then let me do an error here so you can see that. Just toss a zero in there, save. I should probably change that to a red font. Let's do an inline style here. Actually, it's gotta be an object. So we'll say color red. There we go. So that's use reducer. As far as using Redux or use reducer, I typically will pull in Redux if I need a lot of state over my entire application. But you know, with this, we're just using it in one component. Maybe if you had like a nested child component and you wanted to send some stuff in there, I'd still use use reducer. It's a little quicker to get up and running, not as much boilerplate. Although another thing I will show you as far as boilerplate goes, you can make all these different variables so you don't have to type them out every time. That also lets you not make the mistake of possibly misspelling one of these. So to show you that, I'll just, and I'll do this in a new file. I'll say actions, I'll say export const. These are global variables. So we'll do all caps and we'll say on fetch start equals the string on fetch start. And I'll duplicate this line with shift option down. And then I'll change these to on fetch fail. And then on and on fetch success. And then what we can do is in the app we can import all as action types from our actions file. And then so here instead of writing a string, and you could have done this in the beginning, you could do action types dot on fetch start, and you get the auto complete there, and you don't have to risk mistyping anything. So let's say 
action types on fetch. Where is my on fetch fail? Okay. And then you'd also use them here too. So if you were going to do it this way, you would set up those action constants, you know, first, and then that way you can use those autocomplete and everything as you're writing them out. But that's use reducer. It's very powerful. It gives you more of a fine-grained control over the relationship of different properties in your state. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Check it, check it.